I'm Hollis Turnbow, and welcome back uh, to our journey to that ultimate goal of quilt as desired. I want to talk about now the, the selection of the design, the considerations that you will have to give for that, uh, show you some samples here of that, talk about sizing and all of those particular things that's required uh, before you actually select the design that you have. I've talked previously about finding designs in books, in magazines, uh, antique places, but of course one of the easiest and most available sources for your quilting design are the plastic stencils. A number of sources have them. I will talk about those here uh, that are available from the stencil company. So when you get to the point that you're really thinking about how you indeed will quilt it and what you will quilt it with, these kind of sources uh, are available for you and they're inexpensive in the long run and they do last forever. So let me give a little rundown of the kinds of quilting designs, motifs, whether it be in a book or stencils or wherever that you might encounter. First you have the blocks and these are to be put into those uh, large open areas or even right over your patchwork. And they come in a lot of configuration and, and designs. Here's just simply a block. The number on the right indicates that this is an 11 inch block. 11 inch block would fit a 12 inch design and I will talk about that a little bit later on. Here's a corner design, still in a block. Another corner design, they give you three options on the same stencil. They come in small sizes, and of course large sizes as I showed you here with the 11 inch block. And then also in very specific subject matter. Here's a Kwanzaa uh, element, here's just a plain flower. Uh, religious designs that you have available for your use. So block designs or any kind of stencils that we have or, or designs in books do come in a lot of uh, subjects or styles or types. The second block uh, style that you will find is what's referred to as continuous line. And these are specifically created for machine quilting. But don't overlook the fact that it's easy to hand quilt this because what happens is you start at one point and you go all the way around and you end at that point. So you're not changing your thread going underneath if you're hand quilting or tying off here and starting over. Continuous line designs, specifically for machine quilting, but very easy for hand quilting. So we have a number of configurations. And again, these will come in all sizes that uh, you might need. And the size will be indicated down here in any company's uh, uh, price mark. This one, for instance, is a 10-inch design, which would fit in an 11 or 12-inch block. So we have those continuous line designs, a border design, same thing. You start here and you end wherever the quilt will end. Then we have border designs. Border designs always give the quilt maker a, a bit of a pause and sometimes a major confusion because while we can or any manufacturer can control the size of a block, and that's very obvious. We can't control the size of the stencil in relation to your particular quilt. When I talk about the size, I'm talking about the length because all manufacturers try to put them on a standard uh, size of plastic. This one is a two and a half inch wide. And keep in mind, whether it's a book or in a stencil, that number will indicate the size of the design not the size of block or border that you might put it into. So that's, we would have the, the border designs which probably, most likely, 99.9% .9 of the time will have to be adjusted and I will discuss that a little bit later. There are two types of border designs and it seems that the adjustment of border is the one subject that quilt makers have the most difficulty with. In fact, the other day I wrote on one of the internet sites uh, and 
made a posting that I was coming here and was going to be talking about stencil designs or quilting motifs and did anyone have any questions. And overwhelmingly the question that came back is how do I adjust my border designs? And I will talk about that a little bit later on and give you some exact examples about how I did that and my recommendation for doing it. But the first consideration that you might do is that when you're selecting a border design, is it going to be directional or non-directional? And what I mean by directional, that means that the design can go either way. It can go forward or backward, as these designs would here. They're very symmetrical in their design, much easier to adjust than a non-directional design. Now, non-directional means that it only goes in one way. And the meaning of that is that you would start at the corner, mark down, corner here, mark down, but at some point you need to change the direction of that. And again, I will talk about that a little bit later on. Interesting thing about this particular design is when I created this, I put some little check marks in here. And that indicated that if you needed to shorten or lengthen it, you could lengthen it at those points because both of these feathers here are exactly the same. So it would not change the integrity of this design if you added another feather or you took one out. So you need to think about that because if you do buy a directional stencil and get home, then you may be very frustrated one interesting thing is this is a nice looking stencil and on first look we might think that it was a non-directional stencil but it isn't. And over the years I've seen this the most misused uh, border design ever because there is confusion. There still it needs to be a point in which you switch the direction because it all flows at one. And what I will see is a quilt in which these two corners match and these two corners match, but all four don't. So give that some consideration because it'll be a lot easier in the long run for you to make whatever adjustment needs to be made. Then there are designs that pertain to specific types of, of quilt making. These were created for double wedding rings quilts. So make it easy because they're scaled to the particular size and they're configured so it would be a, a particular uh, fit in a particular space. Now, if you have a, a motif that you can't find a, a stencil for or a book for, don't overlook the craft store and the painting stencils because all you need in most cases is just the outline of it. So here's another source and especially valuable if you're doing children's or uh, young people's designs. You can get your sports designs at that. So here's the range. This is what you'll find in, uh, in more specific, the types of design that you'll find for your quilt. So, so take a look, give some consideration. Remember I've said earlier, while you're doing the patchwork and applique, be thinking about how it will be quilted because again, it may depend on what you select here. Now, the question always comes up is if my motif, my design that I've chosen does not fit the space, what do I do? So I wanna give you an idea of what you need to think about initially. On blocks, consider leaving about a quarter to one half inch from the design to your seam. That means that it, on a 12 inch block, then an 11 inch design will fit nicely into the space. Another consideration is the design ideally should fit the space without crowding and without giving a lot of extra space around. <coughs> what I've done on this paper is I've used a 12 inch finished block here and I've taken different sizes of stencils and put in there. Here is an 11 inch design in a 12 inch space. Fills the space nicely. Here's the 10 inch. Might work, but again, uh, doesn't fill the space ideally. 
And then here is another one that's down to 8 inch. Now, if you have something like this, a small design which does not fill into the space, you could very easily modify the design by putting some grid work behind it. So this then becomes part of something else. So don't overlook the fact that you could indeed use this, but it has to have something in here to fill in that space. A really good example made of this is on the table to my left, the pillow. If you can see the cent central motif, for me obviously is too small for the open space. The quilt maker could have adjusted that by putting a grid behind it. Then the smaller design would have been part of the whole. Here's another example that I did using the same concept, a small design used in the corner with a grid behind it. Now while these may have been too small for my space, by adding the grid makes it all part of the else. So think about adding groups of stencils together. Another good example of selection, here's an antique or vintage design, actually came from a vintage quilt. Look at all of these spaces in here. Your quilts have a number of sizes all over it and you may need just a small one. But it's interesting because what we need to do is to think a little bit beyond what's the obvious. I could use this in a small triangular. I've actually created this and added two of the leaves out. So think about what you can do with the existing design to get as much mileage out of it as you can. I have an example here of a small quilt which I made using exi existing stencils, which gives a good example of some of the concepts that I've been talking about. In most cases, for me, and the, the guidelines I've given, they don't necessarily fit the space. This one is a little bit too narrow. But yet, based on the proportions here, this was the only size stencil that I had. If I increased it in width, then I would be in trouble, you know, it'd be either too wide or I would have to make my own. This might have a little bit too uh, much space here. Uh, some of these do better. The center one certainly it fills the space much better. When selecting the quilting designs or the motifs, think about this. The quilting should fill the space without crowding and it should have a uniformity all over because the quilting is a very integral part of the finished quilt. I hope you've gotten some ideas uh, and certainly inspiration from what we've talked about, uh, uh, motifs and designs that are available. I'm Hollis Turnbow, and again, thank you for watching.